Like you already know from the title, we're going to be talking about the size of the D. Does it really matter? I'd be breaking down the biggest sexual myth of all time surrounding the D, apparently the most talked about myth for centuries. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's dive into it. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jane Lawrence, aka Juicy Jane, and I come with a lot of juice. Now, do this real quick before we commence the show. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a video here. And also make sure to give the video a thumbs up so that you could inform YouTube that you love what I do, okay? That you're feeling what I do. You're feeling my content. I need my videos to be popping this December, all right? Now, does the size of the D really matter? The answer apparently um, to this question truly depends on different women for different reasons. I think quite possibly one of the first things women have ever heard about sex had to do with the size of the guy, the size of the guy's D. From the big feet and the hand test to height of the guy, like I have heard some people say that if you want to know what the man is packing, then check his feet or his finger or even his height. And that would invariably tell you how big he is. Some people even say that most skinny guys have the biggest D and guys who are on the big side have the smallest D. So basically the size of a man's D is quite the topic of discussion for centuries. It's a cultural phenomenon between both women and men to debate the size of the male's D. So there is a cultural perception that bigger absolutely feels better. But is that actually always the case? Don't get me wrong, of course I would like my man to be pretty endowed in all, but our societal opinion about the size originated probably before we even had sex. So we have a misconceived perception on what size is preferable. Do you get what I mean? And it's funny how most of us learned about sex from mainstream X-rated films and the media, which of course favors men who are on the larger side. Young people who watch these ex exaggerated movies assume that the large size, the large Ds are the norm and anything outside the norm is unacceptable and undesirable. But that is like, that is so not true. Cause honestly, that's all a myth. In my findings, I've actually found that, that most women are not as focused on size as culture makes it look like. That's what the case is. For sure, there are plenty of women who love how a big D feels in their body when it gets in, like the fullness and everything. But overall, I think this is a cultural myth we keep repeating over and over and over and over, so much so that it sort of becomes true. Not all women like it big. I mean, the average length of a flaccid D is like, 3.61 inches while the average length of the erect D is like 5.16 um, inches and this is like medically for example an erect joystick of 6.3 inches is the 95th percentile what I mean by that is that out of 100 men only five would have a D longer than 6.3 inches likewise an erect D of uh, like 3.94 inches it's in the fifth percentile, meaning also that only five out of 100 would have a, a, a D shorter than 3.94 inches. So you see the percentage of men with smaller than average size and bigger than average size are quite marginal compared to men with average size. Look, it's actually more common to see women who are looking for help when your partners are too big rather than too small. Most women prefer width. You know, you've got to have width or girth than length. But then again, the question is, how do you work that thing up when you both get down into business? How do you make use of what you have? Because if you go into a sex toy shop and you ask the attendant, what size do women come to buy? What size of dildo do women come to your shop to buy? They will tell you that more women purchase toys on the smaller side than the opposite. But for sure, for sure, folks like all kinds of sizes. But for every nine inches plus dildo that, you know, a sex toy attendant sells, to you know females they would tell you that they sell three times as many smaller ones than the huge ones so tell me who are the women calling out for big d <laughs> can they take the big d who are the women calling for the big d do you get what i mean these are women who probably have been satisfied time and time again by men with big D's such that it becomes so unsatisfying, so unrewarding to be with an average sized guy. 
and I've actually found that, that women are not as focused on the size as culture makes us to think. But that doesn't mean that we would appreciate a guy with a small size, as small as my pinky. Or maybe he tries to put it in and you can't feel anything. And you're wondering to yourself, is he in already? Like, dude, are you in already? No, as a matter of fact, the smaller the size, the more work you have to do and the more difficult position you have to put that woman through. So guys, just get it that it is more about the sensation for women. Are you big enough to fill the gaps? Can she fill your strokes? Because I tell you, bigger doesn't necessarily mean that it feels better. But rather, it's the fact that we've convinced ourselves that bigger feels better. When in reality, it's all about what you can do with what you have. It's all about what you can do with what you're packing. Some men have it big but can't put in a work with weak strokes. They pride themselves in how big they are. And think that that's all women need to come. Or that's all women need to orgasm. Some big D's are not even strong or rigid enough to give good strokes. It just looks like you're playing with big mitts. Plus, it's just disappointing that you have all that and you still need to hold it with your hands to support it. Hell nah. So just give us the average, turgid, you know, strong, firm D that's going to whip it real good. Do you get what I mean? Because ladies, if you're focusing on size, then what should men pay attention to? I honestly think that women should focus on their partner's desire to please and connect with them. Because that makes it, that makes a better lover than the size of the D. You could have the greatest size in the world, but you know, you're not connecting in, intimately. Because as women, we should rethink our definition of sex. As penis in vagina isn't the, you know, the gold standard of sex. Oral play, foreplay, tantric sensuality. And any other way that you and your partner touch or penetrate each other is sex or love making. And that's what should count. Look, when we have a broader definition of sex, we open ourselves up to a lot more possibility. The truth is, if your partner is so large, it causes pain. And some positions may just not be enjoyable anymore. Too much of everything is bad. Do you get what I mean? Too much of everything is just bad. So average is good. Just have it at the back of your mind that sex shouldn't be painful. And you deserve to have pleasurable experiences with your partner. There is so much more to sex than, you know, the physical appearance of your genital. Now, if you want to know the truth, that isn't exactly where all the pleasure is coming from. When seeking out a lover, I would hope that people are focused on and looking for someone who makes them feel good. Someone who is attentive to, to their needs. Someone who listens to them and, genu and someone who genuinely cares how good sex is for them. So instead of wondering how big they might be, wonder how freaky they are all right so if you want a part two of this video because i'm not i'm not done and this is just like the preambles let me know then i would wrap up something real quick for you all right until my next video keep living the fab life Mwah. <laughs>